Hi everybody. Happy Wednesday. Sorry for the way I look, but I can't put eye makeup on. I'm hoping for an improvement before Friday, before I go to Woolfest. But I've had an eye infection, as I've told you before. Uh, this eye's <laughs> very blurred, but the, at least the, the redness has gone out of the corner of it now. I'm on eye drops, so don't worry about me, people. I'll be better soon. Well, I've almost finished one of the shawls. It needs the... I still haven't decided whether I'm going to fringe it or put a tassel, you know, on the end of each edge. Um, it might be one I'm wearing for Woolfest. I haven't quite decided. I don't know why I've got Gigi hair on it. But it wouldn't be me, would it? I must admit, I'm not as careful about Gigi hair when I'm crocheting anything for myself. I'm just a bit more paranoid about it when I'm making things for other people. Uh, Gosh, I feel breathless, I don't know why. Um, the other shawl I'm in the process of making, uh, this one, by the way, was from Lolly's little um, bull shack. And um, that was the one it was, the Armoni. As you can see, I've not got much left, but this is for the um, fringing or the tassels or whatever you want to call it. This one, again, was one of Lolly's. Again, this one's probably going to be mine. I did t try to see if uh, I could get any more of this. I can get, I've got another lot of this. So if anybody desires a shawl, let me know. But it will be a little bit more expensive than my normal shawls because it's such a big shawl. It's got like an extra ball in it. And um, this is another one that I haven't, this is mine and I can't get any more of this at the minute. They just say they're out of stock, so maybe they'll get some more in later. That's this one. It's such a fabulous colour, I can't bear to part with it. <laughs> I know, selfish crochet around her. But I haven't made myself any shells for a while. So I thought it was time I made myself a couple of shells. But I'm hoping that they've got some more of this uh, in stock soon. Um, I just keep looking, you know. Like I always do on lollies, I just keep on looking. And, uh, no, <laughs> I wound the ball for this one so it's not in its rightful ball. The thing was that the last ball start, finished up with a bit of purple on the outside, but it was only kind of like one row. And the purple on the next ball was on the outside of the ball, which I really don't like using the outside of the ball. So I had to um, bind it. So. It's not in its original ball form, if you know what I mean. So, uh, there's not as much purple in that as I would like. There's more orange and red. There's red in the middle of this yet. Still to come, red. But I still like it. <laughs> what else did I get from um, Lolly as well? I got two big skeins like this, which is a beautiful colour. But it was a Beesum, an absolute beesum to wind. Couldn't wind it on my ball winder because my ball winder doesn't go to what, 200 grams or whatever this was. This one goes very fine and then thick and lumpy and then it changes from the green to the pink. And the skein, I don't know whether I pulled it apart unevenly, you know, when I undid it all, whether I sort of twisted it in some way or another. Didn't think I did, but it was a bee's knees to um, to wind. It kept getting all in and knocked them. If I'd have put it on my Swift, it wouldn't have been any better because it was just kind of, it went from one way to another way to another side and I felt like I was, uh, it was a labour of love. I got two balls out of that skein. So I'll have another one ball or two balls. That got too big for me to wind, so I had to split it. So I got those two out of one of those hanks. What I'm going to make with it, I really don't know yet because I didn't realise when I ordered it quite how thick and thin it was. So I have a pattern actually for a thick and thin um, cardigan done like in a mesh stitch. So and it, the wool that I, I use wasn't thick and thin, but the wool on the pattern was thick and thin. 
So I don't know how it's going to go, you know, with the very thin bit, where how it's going to, to last, I don't know. Um, watch this space, is all I can say. Watch this space. And then the last thing I got from Lollies was I got four balls of this. I think Christina got the same colour. I'm not too sure. This again is another Armani and it's synthetic, but it's beautiful colours. I was talking to one of my uh, friends on internet and she's actually been physically to uh, Lolly's little wool shack and she said the people there were lovely, you know, really pleasant people. So we, 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 we do plan on going physically, um, Sue and I one day, but like with Sue working and one thing and another and a childcare and everything, we don't know quite when we're going to go so we just have to watch this space again watch this space right what else did I get well um, I wasn't going to order any more wool as you know um, because of well I did get rid of quite a few of my um, stash quite a lot of my stash but it won't be happening again because I took a loss on the price of the wool which obviously I was selling it but then not only that I vastly underestimated the cost of sending it to people so really I came out of that, I could have given it away if you know what I mean. I made absolutely no money towards my decking paint and that. So that was a lesson learned, wasn't it? I shan't be doing it again. Um, unless you live near enough to me <laughs> to have a look what I've got in person and collect it in person. I shall not be doing that again. Sorry people, but I don't think you want to pay the price of some of the... It really shocked me. I was charging people like four or five pounds for the postage and it come out to be nine pounds when I got to the post office. I sent it all, don't worry if you've ordered anything from me, I have sent it all. But it's a lesson learned, isn't it? Don't try and be clever and try and get some money for your paint. Still, never mind. I shall keep the rest of it and I shall use it up when I'm 103. <laughs> well, I would do if I didn't stop keep buying things. That's the trouble with me, I get so attracted, you know, to things like this and, and this and I can't bear to leave it there in the shop and I have to buy it. And I'm glad I bought this because, like, it's out of stock now, so hopefully she'll get some more. I think she's still got some more of this colour, if you're interested. Sorry about that, but I'm very thirsty. And it is just orange juice, I can promise you. Right, what did I get from Ice? Sorry, I'm going to be rustling. This is called Soft Chain Wool Red White. My niece is going to like this because she liked the centre of my... Um, remember the big shrug thing I made for myself that was red and white and black? Well, in the middle it had this colour. And my niece did say, she said, oh, I do like that colour. So this is what it is, it's ice. I only got it this, well, I don't say I only got it. I only got it this week, but I ordered it about three weeks ago. It took that long to come. First time it's ever done that. I don't know where it went, but it went round the houses before it got to me. But uh, I presume maybe they've still got this because I've only had it, well, I say I ordered it three weeks ago. So hopefully they've still got it if you like it. Uh, I think it's uh, acrylic. They usually are, aren't they, unless they say. It does say soft chain wool, but I don't think it's 100% wool. Hang on. Why do you always print things upside down? Oh, it's got 30% in wool, 55 acrylic, and then the rest is polyamide. So it has got some wool in it, but not enough to make it itchy, you know. That's one of the paler ones. It does come in like a deeper. I presume it fades from white to the deep ready pink colour so I don't know what I'm going to make with it when Christina sees anything in order she goes what are you going to make with it and I, go, I don't know I never know what I'm going to make with things I just order them you know because I like the colours um the second colour that I ordered is a sort of I don't know whether you'd call it grey or whether you'd call it a denim blue it looks, sorry for rustling, it looks a pale grey on that ball with just a little bit of 
or other grey in it. That's what it looks like. But when you get further down the package, to me it almost looks like a very dark navy or whether you see it as grey, I don't know. But then it's got the obviously got the paler bits in the middle of the ball. So again it's going to be shaded from one shade to another. So I bought two packs of each because I didn't think it was like you know that kind of shading would be good on a top. I thought it was more of a cardigan or a, a, a shrub kind of yarn. But let's see what they call this. There's something vastly exciting. Um, soft chain wool. Yeah it is navy and light blue. But I would actually call that a silver grey, not a light blue. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, I've got one more colour to show you. And this is Soft Chain Wool Turquoise Shades. Very pretty this one. Sorry for us, we should have done all this before, shouldn't we? Then you wouldn't just have the delight of seeing it come out the bag. Um, this one starts off with that kind of colour, like a, a lovely sort of turquoisey colour. And it's also got a darker colour with it. It looks sort of charcoal -y, or it could be a navy blue. I'm not too sure with it. So obviously that's shaded or shades of blue, isn't it, that one? Again, no idea what I'm going to make with it yet. But I do have a lot of patterns in the pipeline, you know, that I've bought or bookmarked or whatever. So I've got a lot to choose from and there's also been some nice YouTube ones, um, you know, for cardigans and things that I thought, oh, that's nice, mark that for later. I tell you, not only am I going to have to live to 100 to do all these things, I'm also going to have to do it in my sleep. And talking about sleep, um, the sleep pattern's still up the wall. I went to bed last night, it would be about one. Heard the alarm, so they did wake me up, but I just reached over and turned the alarm off. And I woke up at 10 to 12 this morning. So I'm getting to be like Kendra, <laughs> from Hook by Happenstance, or Happenstance Place. She has the same weird sleep pattern that I do. <laughs> We're at our most alert in the wee small hours of the morning, but uh, we can't do early mornings at all. Although I'm going to have to do early morning tomorrow because I've got the dentist. Isn't that a joy? Going to the dentist just before you go into Woolfest. It's only for a clean, but because my teeth are so sensitive, she has to in inject me, which I hate you know, to numb me up before she can clean them properly because of, uh, they're just so sensitive. And the trouble with that is where, you know, when she's cleaned them and you breathe in, it's like, ooh, it's like ice cream on your teeth because she takes all the layer of everything off. <laughs> when she takes the layer of whatever it is that lands on your teeth, plaque or whatever, it also makes them ten, sorry, fly, ten times more sensitive than what they were. So I'm going to be going around Woolfest going, oh, 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 I hurt. Just hope it's not chilly. Otherwise, when I breathe in cold air, I'll be going, ooh, wow, ooh. Mainly I'll be doing that anyway. I've not been having a good week pain-wise this week. You know, you know, I don't like to go on about it, but some weeks my pain's worse than others, and it's one of those weeks. So I'm just hoping that it's got right by Woolfest, you know, and I'll be okay. Although I have got my chair, my, my great big massive wheelie chair. <laughs> it looks like a chair for the really obese, it's a really wide one, but I don't care. I can be like, gangway, I'm coming through. <laughs> I was going to make a bag for it, you know, at the front, so I can hang everything in it. But I'm not going to buy. <laughs> I mean, it really has pulled me up sharp, you know, I thought I was going to gain some money and I didn't. So it's like, kind of, whatever, do whatever you, you can. This is a book that came you know, the other day, um, it was a pre-order. I've got three books on pre-order that I didn't know when they were going to come. They were saying things like July and August. Anyway, they told me this one was in and it was sent coming out to me. It's called Curfree Crochet and it's by, oh goodness, May Brit Bjella 
Zamori, I think, if you can focus in on that title there. I hope the light's not shining on it. I think that's what she's called, but I might have just butchered the name. But anyway, um, I'd ordered this. I mean, look at the look at those. So it's enough to make you want to do them. Just looking at those. I never really colour, uh, colour, crochet these kind of colours, but I do like them. It's just that uh, I really need bolder colours. Says me wearing black. Yeah. yeah. But you know what it's like. Yeah. Anyway, it's called Carefree Crochet, and I got mine from Amazon, which is usually top white money, but. I'm sure you can get yours from other booksellers. That I do love the scarf. It's a real chunky scarf. It's the one that's on the front cover. That's definitely going to be in my wardrobe this winter. And uh, I love that. That says green vest. Um, I don't know whether you call it a vest or not. To me it's like a short sleeve cardigan. But I just love the pattern. I think the pattern's really pretty. It's, uh, I mean, the yarns, I don't really know them. Maybe she's, you know, lives in another country or something. I don't mean the US, I mean another country. Um, it says it's a worsted Aran alpaca fairy tale, but I don't recognise it. It's C-Y-C-A. But like other things, you can always find a substitute, can't you? That's the hat that goes with it. Uh, now you've got the beige hat, scarf and mittens. This is not um, the one. Is there a bigger picture? No. This is not the one that's on the front cover. This is a different one. It's all close together. So you've got mittens, scarf and hat with that. This is rather cute. I like this one. It's a boho bag. I don't know whether you can see it or not. You know I like anything with a boho and a fringe. <laughs> and I really must get those linings done on my bags. It isn't so much doing the linings, I've got to do all the finishing off. You know, putting the handles on them and stuff like that. Well, that's a better photograph. It's not a photograph of it all, but it's a better photograph of the stitches. Now that is just me. That is me to a T. But I have to line everything because, of course, I don't like floppy handbags, you know. That's why I don't like market bags when they go flopsy. Um, this one is a hat and wrist warmers. It looks very knitted, but it isn't. I had to look at it twice because I thought it was knitted, but it isn't. It is crochet. This one's a... I wish they give you bigger pictures. This one's a headband and boot toppers and wrist warmers. But the picture with them all on is very, very tiny. If you can see it without the glare. So, this is the black and grey bag. It's got a, it's a bigger bag like that. Black and grey bag. Um, beige top. Very, very sort of simplistic that, isn't it? And this one is a flower vest. I mean, I would like mine to meet a bit more, but perhaps she's wearing a a size that's small on her. I wouldn't make it anyway because it's circled. Well, it's petals and flowers, isn't it? You know what I'm like. That's a, a close-up of the actual stitch of it. You know what I'm like with anything with a circle in it. Well, there's a side view of it. According to the chart, you've got to make a gazillion of these flower-shaped things or whatever star-shaped things. This is in alpaca tweed. Again, it's an iron. It's a nice close-together jacket if you wanted it for winter. Oops, oops. 
that's more my type of thing when it's winter time. Now this one, uh, oh that's a, uh, oh gosh these thick, the pages are so thick. You don't often get such good quality books, they're usually really slim and flimsy. That's a beige pillow cover with sequins and a silver blue pil pillow cover. Um, now this one does have knitting. It looks as though it's a crochet body on the cardigan, but the sleeves are knitted. Yeah, it just says your cardigan is crochet with front post double crochet. Um, it produces a heavier garment than the regular double crochet. So this cardigan, oh excuse me, will be worn as a, a jacket in the spring and the fall. It's not the best design for a beginner. That's probably because it incorporates the two stitches as well. Righty ho. Now this is very, very pretty, but it's very, very fine. <laughs> so you know me, I'm fine. I'll be there forever making something like that. They are beautiful and they drape very well. But it's done in a mohair luxe and cotton viscose and it's on a 350 hook, which is a USE. Yeah, it's done in, again, this CYCA, whatever that is. Um, mohair looks. The alternative yarn is Garn Studio Drops Kid Silk. I haven't used that but I have seen it and it's quite fine. So I mean there's a lot, a lot of crochet in there. But if, if it would be lovely when it's made. But as I say, a bit too much crochet for me. This one is a beige coat and scarf. Once again, it doesn't meet on the model. I would have to make mine at least to go edge to edge. That one's done in, again, alpaca, this CYCA, whatever this is. Um, alpaca and alpaca silk. Maybe you do them both together, I don't know. It's on a USJ or a 6mm. Is that 6 or 8? I can't see. I think it's a 6mm. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, it's got a scarf with it as well. Nice design, but I would like to make that a bit more so it met. Now this I do love. It's a striped jacket. It's not done in the cakes or anything like that. You're doing it in all different shades. Um, it's light worsted. Again, it's that CYCA, which, whatever that is. Never even heard of it. Maybe you have, I don't know. And it's done in blue, light grey, grey, beige and yellow. So you're obviously making it in stripes. And it's on a, a G or a 4mm hook. I do like that though. I think it's very pretty. And, you know, maybe that one would hopefully meet in the middle. This one is the same jacket as the one that was in the stripes, but it shows it done in the plain colour. You know, if you didn't want a stripy jacket. That's the white long scarf with the fringe, the one that's on the front cover. Very pretty. That's done in iron as well. Now this I do like, it's done in a worsted iron. It's on a J hook or a, I can't, remember, I can't see if it's six or eight millimeter, but you know, you know what I mean. And I think that is really pretty, really like that one. Has to be me when it's got fringe on it, you know? <laughs> I'm still the old hippie at heart. That one's pretty, this is done in once again, it's done in that CYCA, whatever that is. I'll have to look it up. Um, worsted Afghan Aran. That's a nice sweater. Nice for the winter. There you've got a blue violet 
pillow cover. That one's done in, oh, whatever. Colour, colour socks and lace looks. Must be fine because it's on a 350 hook or um, an E hook. Uh, this again I do like, it's done in an Aran and done in different shades, I do like that one. All in all I think this book's actually a bit of a success with me because I actually like a lot of the things that are in it. I mean there's more than one which is just, you know, strange for me. That one is a sweater. Now which, whether, I like the sweater itself but I don't like the fact it's got like different sleeves there. I'd have to make my sweater all the same. It's a different yarn entirely, the, the sleeves. I think it's um, it's done in Garn Studio Drops Cotton um, or, ki or Kid Silk or Mohair Looks but it's got like the two oh excuse me oh, sorry about making you yarn it's got the two different textures you know onto the sleeve and that's the bit I don't know whether I like or not unless it's definitely one that I will be wearing of course a little mini skirt with a zip down the back. <laughs> Don't all rush. <laughs> Ideal for somebody who's lovely and young and slender. But Jeff, definitely not for me. Um, this one is a light blue dress. Again, it's done in the iron weight, so it is quite pretty. Not that I would make the dress, but it, I like the stitch and the style of it. Um, I think the full pictures are very small. Yeah, I have to sort of cover that up a bit, won't I? That's the, if you can see it, the full length version of it. So it's only a, a just, just before, above the knee. This one is a blue coverlet and a bolster. That's in shades of blue. Once again, that is done in Sport Baby or Garn Studio. Ooh. It's on a four millimeter or a G hook. Maybe it's a lightweight double knit if whatever. But again, it's got circles in it, so that is a, a, a no no from me. Blue sweater edge with green and a headband. Well, they don't do a big picture of this, sadly. They just do little pictures, if you can see them. Nice sweater. But I don't think I'd do blue and lime green, but that's just me, isn't it? Alright, what's this one? Oh, that's a separate pattern. This one's called, oh, Grey Cardigan. It's done in super bulky. Not a very good picture, you can't actually see what it's supposed to be like. It's a baggy cardigan looking at it, isn't it? The way she's swinging it about, you can't tell. This is a black poncho with detachable hood and wrist warmers. So again, you're not going to be able to see it too well because of it being a black on the picture. Still. Um, pink sweater with detachable collar. Again, it's done in something fine, I think. Oh, well, it's on a four millimeter a G. Oh, excuse me for the yoga. <laughs> I like it, but I think it's too too busy around the neck. It is detachable that collar thing. It's just a little bit busy for me. You may have noticed that, but I've got a very short neck and anything that's a bit... F I'm the same with cowls. I can't really wear a cowl very successfully because it uh, <laughs> chokes me. This one is a vest with a rounded back. It's on a 3.5 millimetre or an E-hook. And it's in fingering, fingering cotton. Very pretty. Very nice and lightweight for 
sola. This is a sweater dress and a hat. It looks like it's done in sort of a, a mesh kind of stitch. It's done in, again it says worsted iron, which it doesn't look that way. It looks quite a lot thinner than that. And it's done on a G, on a 4mm hook. Oh no, sorry, it's done on a 5mm too, which is a, a H for the sweater. The hat's on a G or 4mm. Yeah, it is a dress, as you can see. It's a very... Oh, sorry to squeak, squeak. A very mini dressy. There's quite a lot of patterns in this book, actually. That's a cushion, blanket and a pillow. It's done in very colourful colours. I mean, the dog's sitting on half of it, so you can't tell what it really looks like, but that's what it is. And that's done in... Sport baby weight. Uh, it's on a E or three fifty crochet hook. Two round pillows. When I first got married, my aunt made me some of these pillows, and I thought they were old fashioned. And although I kept them for ages, I eventually got rid of them, and I wish I'd have kept them now because they're absolutely gorgeous. And she took a lot of time and trouble. And she made them for me all in rainbow shades. But at the time I I didn't care for them, which is I'm sad now I didn't keep them. You know, the things you give away when you're younger and you know you haven't got any sense or something like that, yeah. This one's done in um fingering, it's on an e hook three fifty. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous, although I wouldn't make make mine quite so long because they do tend to edge their way downwards when they're washed, don't they? But I do love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it says this one takes a bit of time, but it's a good challenge for a beginner. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Get near the end, folks. This one is... I do like the pattern of the... Uh, top on this but I don't think I would do it in so many colours or such bright colours that's because I'm old you see if you were nice and young you probably want them in these bright colours um, that one's done in that CYCA again um, light worsted and it's done on a, oh, a three millimetre D hook so it's got to be something quite fine isn't it it is pretty, I just, I like the stitches, I like the pattern, I just don't like the quite such bold colours, even though I do like bold colours, but you see I do like that one, that's a blue top, once again that's, um, I think it's in fine again, yeah it's in fingering and it's on a D hook which is a 3mm, now I do like that, those two shades I think, well two or three shades look really nice together. Yep. See, there's so many things in this book I want to make. So, and then, you know, with me and my figure, I would absolutely love to wear a crochet bikini. Yes, I would have worn it when I was young. I would have, I think it's beautiful. But not for me at the minute, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe 30, 40 years ago I would have worn it, you know. But um, not right at the moment. What else is next? A pink shawl. There's not a very good picture of that actually. There's only a picture of it over the bikini. It's a pink shawl. I think that's done in quite fine work if I remember rightly. Yeah, it's on a D or a three millimeter hook. Um, it says it's light worsted, but I would think it's more like a finger in myself actually to make it look so um, airy and lightweight. Then we've got the beige pillow candle holder 
Candle holder cover and cup cosy. Right. I don't know if you can see all those. There they all are. They're well, done in light worsted, a G or a 4mm hook. And that, my friends, is the end. So in case you missed it, it's called Carefree Crochet. Um, 50 fashionable projects that make you feel good. And I must admit, there's quite some nice things in this book. Uh, big hooks, fluffy yarn, unique textures, great results, it says. It's by a lady called May Britt. But the next one is Bjella, I think it's B-J-E-L-L-A. And Zan Zamore. Z-A-M-O-R-I. But I'm sure if you Googled up Creative Crochet, you should be able to get the book. It seems to be a fairly new one because I had to pre-order it. So I was surprised it came so soon because the dates that they were quoting for me were like July and August. So I was surprised when it turned up in the down, you know, through the doorstep. Through the doorstep. <laughs> through the door. Or at my doorstep. Well, whichever. You know, the teeth are not working at all. I'm really looking forward to Woolfest. I'm starting packing my handbag. You know, with the usual stuff in. Your tissues, your wet wipes, your... Uh, all kinds of things, you know. Uh, not forgetting the tickets, of course. So, well, we'll be there. I don't know what time we'll arrive, but Sue and I will be going up on the Friday. Um, we're setting off quite early -ish, but we are stopping off to have some breakfast. So I don't know what time we'll arrive. I think we're meeting up with Zoe and Claire. Um, she has put a note somewhere on. I think they've made an announcement somewhere. They're meeting up at 12 o'clock noon anyway. Somewhere in this small hall or something, whatever that is. And uh, we'll find out when we get there. And Christina and um, Kelly, who's I'm Yarn Inspired, and her friend Aaliyah, they're going up on the Saturday. If you are going Saturday, you'll say hi. Uh, you recognise Kelly because she wears a jab, <laughs> so you recognise her. And uh, I think she'll have her glasses on. She was trying for contact lenses, but I think she's back to glasses now. So anyway, you'll you'll notice her. you notice me because I'll be the one with the big wide wheeler taking up half of the, well, more than half of the, the walkway or sitting down somewhere in front of a stall. <laughs> That'll be me. Five steps forward, sit down. You know, I'll probably tell Sue to go and wander off on her own because, like, you know, we'll meet up later in the cafe or something. Because it's annoying when somebody's holding you up by keep sitting down every five minutes, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. So just say hello. I may not recognise you by your face because I usually recognise people by the uh, names that they use on YouTube. You know, when they come on and say hi to me on my um, Saturday Night Live, yeah. I will be taking ca uh, my camera, but as you know, I'm a very disjointed uh, video maker and I can't edit at all. Poor Zoe's ripped her hair out nearly trying to get me to edit and it just doesn't work with me. So you may get a million little videos all about five minutes long. <laughs> but I'm taking two batteries and I'm taking two memory cards. So all being well, I should get enough photos or whatever. To put, I've got still got that feeling that there's something in my eye. It's an awful feeling. It feels like I've got a hair across my eye. I keep putting my drops in and that. But as you can see, I've still got the bagginess under here. But at least they've gone down now. They were like two puff balls before. I could barely see out of them. I would have been going around Wolfest wearing sunglasses. <laughs> so that you'd... Uh, nobody had to look in my baggy eyes, yeah. I don't know what it is, I presume it's some kind of an allergy or something. I probably rub my hands with, you know, I've had something on my hands. Because I have itchy eyes and I'm always rubbing them. You know, because I have to remember when I've got eye makeup on. Ooh, you know, I'm like halfway through her. And I'm thinking, no, you can't rub, you've got mascara on. But you see, I may have done that. I may have even rubbed my eye, forgetting I've got makeup on. 
and I may have rubbed something into my eye here. It's all whatever. But I'm great at getting allergies in my eyes anyway. It can be from pollen, it can be from anything. So that's why I'm looking rather bleh today. <laughs> not my usual self. I did put a bit of lipstick on, trying not to look so... I said to my friend yesterday, I said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, I really am. I've got the GP next Monday. Um, so he'll be telling me off about my diabetes. He always is. He tells me off every time he sees me. So like, am I worried? No. Should I be worried? Yes. We all know what we should be doing, don't we? Let's be honest about it. We all know we shouldn't be eating this. Shouldn't be eating that. But do we eat it? Mm -mm. But as they say, anything in moderation is, is good for you. Unless you're allergic to things, of course. But um, I have to look through all the ingredients that because I don't like nuts. I'm not allergic to nuts. You know, I, can, I could eat them. It's just I don't like the taste of them. And nearly all the... I was searching like for things to... Even salad, ready-made salads and things. I was searching for in Tesco's and they've all got nuts and stuff. Or that horrible quinoa. I'm sorry, but if you like quinoa, how do you eat it? It's like grit, isn't it? My least favourite things in the world are quinoa and kale. <laughs> I know it's healthy for me, but I cannot get over the grittiness. It's just gritty. I tried cooking it, but dark green cabbage, love it. Spinach, love it. But when you and sp uh, sprouts, can't get enough of sprouts. I love them, but kale, no. Nah. It's bitter and it's gritty. <laughs> My daughter-in-law used to make the juice drinks when we were all juicing at one stage, and she'd sneak kale in and think really don't like the taste of it. It's like quinoa to me, that's just like grit. <laughs> You're all going to tell me, I oh, love it and you eat it all the time. But it's like brown rice. I mean, I, I sent away for Chinese dinner the other day because I had nothing in and I wasn't in the mood to start surviving on eggs or something. So I sent away to the Chinese and when the fried rice came, it was brown, fried brown rice. Nope. It's not sort of, I know it's better for you but it, it's gritty to me, you know, I like the softness and the fluffiness of white rice everything that's bad for me I like you know, and I keep thinking, heck I'm 72 you know, a little of what you fancy does you good, you know what you're saying, it's just like that I do not intend to spend the rest of my life on a rigid diet Otherwise, it will feel a lot longer to the end of my life. <laughs> it may extend my life by a couple of years, but will it be worth it if I don't like what I'm eating for the next 10, 15, however many years I'm going to live? Hopefully. She said, hopefully. You never know what comes next to you. But, uh, no. I'm trying to make changes. As you know, I bought those Harry Biker books and I bought some other... Um, they're not diet books per se, they're just like um, making your normal things but in a slightly different way to eliminate some calories. Um, so I'm going to read them, there's like a shepherd's pie and different things like that. See things like that I will eat, you know what I call like normal food I will eat. Um, I'll eat other food if other people cook it for me. But I can't be bothered with all these herbs, spices, fancy things and that. Because it means I have to buy a jar of each of them and then I don't use them again and next thing they're in the cupboard and my son's saying, this is 2002. <laughs> How long have we had this nutmeg? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, you know, when you're not a fantastic cook or anything like that. You could do with them selling, you know, like they have like little salty and teeny weeny little packages and stuff in, in these coffee houses. You could do is doing that with herbs and spices for me you know little teeny one teaspoonfuls of herbs and spices so i could just buy them like that i know they would be expensive but they would be less expensive for me because i wouldn't be buying a whole jar full and throwing the rest of it in the dustbin that's my thoughts on this anyway 
I tend to cheat and just get like mixed herbs and stick them in everything, you know, because it's just one jar, isn't it? You know, I know I don't get the right flavour that other, you know, the cooks get. <laughs> Shuffling up a bit here. Don't get the right flavour like, that the cooks get when they're using this and they're using that with this and oh. I could do with a really good friend who makes more than they need and puts it in the freezer and then I can pay them. <laughs> Send me a box full every week, like frozen. <laughs> Home cooked meals frozen, yeah. I mean, I went into looking into these diet plan things that they send to your door and that, but they are so expensive. You know, oh, so, so expensive. And I don't like the diet food things that are in the supermarket because they'll say chicken and something and it'll say so many calories and when you open it you can't find the chicken, you know? I thought, no, there has to be an easier way than this. You get a little punnet like that. And as I say, it's got a pile of gravy in it and a little teeny piece of chicken that you would cut up and give to a baby, you know? So I'm not that desperate to lose any weight that I want to do that. Anyway, I'm going to go now and uh, I've still got some things to finish off because I want to wear one of these shawls to Woolfest. Not decided, it probably will be this one because I've got um, a necklace that's got that colour and the turquoise in it. You know me with my coordination. I've got a hair stuck to it now. Yeah, I will be wearing my... Oh, turquoise, uh, turquoise, my purple cardigan. I know it looks blue, but it's not. It's absolutely a deep um, emperor purple. You see, it does go sort of slightly with that, but it goes better with that. And that's the same colour as my dress. So, I don't really know. It does go better with the brighter yellowy one. But do I want it to look so bold that they're going to find me halfway around? Oh, there she goes, in that bright coloured shawl again. But the shawl is like a last, uh, it's like instead of a coat really, the shawl. Um, really going to be wearing the this and the dress. Unless it's freezing cold, of course, which can happen in our UK weather. I hope you're watching Claire, you might need your welly boots. So I'm going to take me, oh, sorry about that, me, my knees locked. <laughs> Oh, it's fun being aged. My mother used to say, there's no fun in old age, and I'm beginning to think she's right. Yes. Right, anyway. Oh, my car's, not my car. The car's gone off my driveway. Hey, I can see out the window. But the trouble is, people can now see in, so I've got to be a bit more tidier. <laughs> Which is not going to happen, is it, really? Let's face it. You know, when you have cardboard boxes full of wool arriving and you've got shawls half done. Tidiness is just not in my nature. It isn't. I'm just a untidy crafter. The rest of the house is not too bad untidy-wise. You know, I don't leave shoes around and I don't leave coats around and things like that. I just leave yarn around. <laughs> Everywhere. None in the kitchen, none in the bathroom, none in my bedroom, but every other room is fair game, yeah. Right, I really am going, so hopefully the next time I will see you will be uh, a video either at Woolfest or when I, obviously when I come back from Woolfest. Uh, the next time you should see me live would be Saturday at 9 o'clock, as per usual. And we will have quite a bit to chat about if you want to know anything about Woolfest and uh, all the little animals that are there, the alpacas and the whatnots and the rabbits and the angoras and yeah. Hopefully I will take photos for you all and put them on my page. So I really am going now because it's getting near tea time and I'm getting a bit hungry and I'm trying to decide what I'm going to have for my tea. Or dinner or whatever you want to call it. The, the meal about five, six o'clock, yeah. What of that, that meal. And I still haven't put back everything that was... Um, I'd moved for the uh, BT engine.